Hi guys, welcome to another video tutorial with me, Clarice. And in this video, we are progressing on from last week where we learned the simple basics of mixing gouache and getting beautiful gradients like such. And we are going to paint flowers on them today. So really quickly, I'm gonna walk you through my supplies. But before I walk you through my supplies, guys, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe button as it really does help my channel grow and I'm able to continue making videos like this for you guys. So we're going to be using my set of gouache pudding cups, which is right here. This is something that I purchased off Timu, but I have listed the Himi gouache in the description below for you guys. Uh, I've heard great things about that. I'm using my Canson XL watercolor paper right here for my brush. Because we are learning the basics and just trying to get ourselves acquainted with gouache, and it is a thicker medium in comparison to watercolor, we're going to be using the Princeton Lauren number no. two. And then I've got my palette handy on the side. For those of you who remember, this is my shell palette making a comeback. I've got water ready and paper towel ready, and we are good to begin. Let's get started. So for my colors, I'm mixing a little bit of red along with some blue to get like a purplish sort of hue. And I just want this color to be dark and almost like a jewel tone so that it looks bright and interesting against our purple background right here. Also trying to mix colors and get some interesting shades um, will also help along with you getting to no gouache better and this is mainly with the aspect of mixing water to color ratios which are helpful super helpful okay so this is a good enough consistency as you can see it's it's nice and thick it's fabulous and i'm going to use the number two to start creating my flowers but i want to introduce one additional item and that is adding a little bit of white to the tip of our brush as we start painting. So what I'm going to do is get a little bit of white using this brush and I'm just gonna put that aside. I don't have too much space here. I'm just gonna put that aside over here. And you're gonna see exactly how I end up using this in a bit. Roughly washing my color off, I'm just gonna go ahead and get some of that purple and then just getting a little bit of white on the tip of my brush right there. We're gonna go ahead and start painting our flowers. So here's what I'm doing. I've got some white on the tip and I'm going to start off by using the tip, pressing down and trailing off. And you can see how we got that nice white line against that, that's beautiful. I'm gonna do the same thing and this time I'm going to create this on the other side dipping to get a little bit of white on my brush again. I'm gonna lightly haze or graze this part of my flower. Getting more white, we're gonna continue creating our petals all along. So you can choose to create these petals with one stroke or do it like I am doing it, adding one stroke and then going in and adding that second stroke. And the beauty of adding a second color like white to your paint is that it's adding some beautiful light and shadowy kind of effects. I'm gonna get a little bit more of that dark hue right now, mixing it into my brush, then getting some of the white on the tip, and we're gonna do the same thing on this side. And then I'm just sort of adding additional strokes to the center to kind of really tighten that up. And we've got our beautiful flower with different textures. Feel free to go in and mix the white around if you really want to give it some additional shading effects. But if you really take what we've done right here and just repeat them throughout, it makes such a beautiful, beautiful little painting of flowers. So I'm going to continue creating this all around. 
as you do these simple repetitive strokes, you're going to get better acquainted with gouache and how smoothly it transitions from brush onto paper. Now, if you really look at my first flower in comparison to my second flower, there is a little bit of a difference. And this is part of the process of learning how to familiarize yourself with gouache. Try different techniques in terms of mixing color. So notice I went ahead and did several strokes with this petal instead of doing my regular two. Experiment, this is the time where you really learn how things move when you are, when you don't really have a goal in terms of getting a, a painting completed, but you're doing it for fun. That's the best kind of results. You get the best kind of results when you do things for fun. Beautiful, love how these turned out. I'm gonna do a couple more. And this time, I think what I'm gonna do is get some white first. Let me get some of that white. It's kind of mixed in with that color and then get a little bit of that dark tone on the tip. So I'm kind of reversing what I have now. And you can see how it transitions so differently. Gouache is all about getting those layers in and getting the beautiful mix of colors because it actually retains how it transitions on from the first time. Unlike watercolor where it kind of just seeps in, gouache holds its initial blend, I guess you could say. I'm gonna do a couple more here is a good spot. Got a little bit too much on my brush. So you can see my brush is full and heavy with color, but sometimes if it gets rounded at the tip and you don't want that thick lay of color, just brush some off onto your palette before you put your first stroke down. So this is the absolute basic idea in terms of getting flowers down using a regular round brush um, and then just using two tones really or a variation of tones because we're using white with one color. And that gives us different results as we have different mixes happening. But again, you can see how this first one looks in comparison to the others. It's smoothened out so much more. I'm now going to introduce a little bit of this peach color in here. I know I'm mixing it over the yellow, but I don't mind if a little bit of yellow gets into it. And so here I am mixing a little bit of that peach. I'm going to get a little bit of this color on the tip. And we are doing the same thing, but we're going to try and control to make these flowers a little bit smaller if we can. and we are just adding them in between our bigger mauve flowers. And for these ones, if you're really trying to control the size of the petals and the flowers themselves in general, I would suggest going with one stroke as opposed to the two stroke petals that, I, that you probably saw me do as I painted these guys here. The one stroke will help you get smaller results and looser results so you're not going back in to kind of hone in and create more. So just like that, I'm going to do a couple over here. A couple of strokes on the side as well. Got some paint on my hand. I'm gonna even mix a little bit of white in that just to get a little bit of a variation happening. 
and you can totally mix it to the point where when you lay down your strokes it's not giving you a lighter version of the color per se but it's giving you a little bit of white mixed in with the with the beautiful peach and stop when you are ready to stop to get some of that onto the side. And we're just building up on adding depth by the process of varying shades of color happening in here. Now we can tackle the centers of the flower. So I'm just mixing in some of that yellow with a little bit of white. And I'm going to add these little dots. You want the consistency to be thick just like we had it with our flowers. But if it's a little bit lighter, um, that's okay. And this is what's going to give the viewer a little bit of a, an idea as to where flowers are. It also helps break down our composition. And if you're noticing that it stands out a lot more in our dar darker flowers in comparison to the lighter one, um, that is true, but it is also uh, a little bit lighter on my camera screen, I am noticing. So feel free to either go darker or lighter with your flower centers for the purple ones. And then for our nice little peach ones, because we don't want it to look washed out using such a similar color for the center, I'm going to use, I'm going to mix a little bit of brown in with my yellow to get a darker color. So here's what that looks like right here. I don't like wasting color, guys. I like repurposing and just kind of using what we have so nothing gets wasted. All right, so for these ones, I'm just going to lightly create little dots within my flower as opposed to, I know I did some dots in the yellow, but it was a little bit more dots and um, lines. So this is going to be entirely dots. I'm going to even throw some in with these guys just to sort of give it a little bit of a shadowy feel. And then continue on with our dotting for these guys here. Now that's why I'm holding my brush um, 90 degrees so I can use just the tip of my brush to get these little dots in here. I'm also leaving white space in between and by white space I mean just pretty much not covering up the whole area with dots but leaving a little bit of space to indicate breathing room or white space as I like to call it. And there we go. You can see how immediately things just open up. Now the colors are very, very similar to the background. So it's almost monochromatic in feel uh, when you first look at it. But you can change that by adding some beautiful leaves as well. But for now, we're going to focus just on the flower aspect. So I hope you guys try the two colors. Really... Um, Focus on your technique of how you're laying down your brush strokes to get these nice, beautiful textures happening within your petals. Try a couple of different colors. Feel free to use the same colors I've used. Um, entirely up to you, but giving you full creative freedom with this project. So hope you guys enjoyed this.
hit that like button, hit the subscribe button guys. And when you do this, I would love to see your work. So please do tag me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you've got any questions at all, I am here for you guys. And as I mentioned previously, everything I'm using here is listed in the description below. Thanks guys for watching and we'll chat soon next week.